so I will be talking about managing time, um, primarily in Python. Um, spoiler, it's really not that easy. <laughs> um, so a little bit about me. Uh, oh, that didn't work. Oh boy. There we go. All right, so first of all, um, that's not me. I'm not Time Lord. Um, that's not me. And that's definitely not me. Um, don't know if there's any Doctor Who fans in the room, but Peter Capaldi's the worst. Anyway. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so, who am I? A little bit about me. Um, as I was already introduced, um, I am a manager of spacecraft operation software at Spire Global. Um, we are a satellite company. We build and manufacture CubeSats, launch them into space, and collect data from them. Um, and a little plug about the company, we are hiring for my team, so if you're interested, definitely come talk to me. Um, so why is time important? Um, I think a kind of a better question is, you know, why isn't it? You know, it's something that we deal with all the time, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives. And if the programs, the software that we're using is doing it correctly, it's the kind of thing that we don't notice. You know, you, you schedule a meeting with some coworkers on the East Coast. That meeting automatically shows up on their calendars at, you know, a couple hours before. You know, you can go on there and you can see the time zones they're in, so you're not accidentally scheduling, you know, a 7 a.m. meeting Eastern time when you're trying to meet at, you know, actually more like 9 a.m. their time, 11 hours. Um, so yeah, so time, time's the kind of thing that can be really hard to do, um, and it's the kind of thing that if you do correctly, people just don't notice. Uh, so why is time hard? Um, for starters, there are 37 different active time zones in the world. Now, there's only 24 hours around the world, so that's a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, there are time zones that sit in 15, 30, and 45 minute intervals. Um, you also have some areas that respect daylight savings time, some that don't. You have areas inside individual states, like the Navajo Nation, that does not, you, that, that respects daylight savings time, while the state they're in does not. Um, if anyone here has ever traveled between Arizona and Utah, it can definitely get very confusing to try to figure out what time it actually is. Another interesting thing is over the last 75 years, there have been eight different countries that have changed their time zone at some point or another. Um, there are actually nine, the ninth one being North Korea. They changed their time zone in 2015, but they, just, they decided against it and then switched back three years later. Uh, yeah, so another reason why time is hard. Um, definitely have, I'm sure we all have some good war stories around managing time. Uh, a couple of my favorite ones, um, two of them involve testing. So in a previous role, uh, we had a series of acceptance tests that would run whenever you committed code into master. Um, this was an East Coast company. And for some reason, oh, that's good. Uh, for some reason, those tests would fail between 8 p.m. and midnight. Now the code was completely fine. But the problem was, it was entering data into the database, and then when it was requesting back, it wasn't specifying the time zone, so it was requesting data based on UTC time when it really wanted Eastern. So there was literally a block of time where the test would fail, and then once 1201 came around, the test would start to pass again. And I actually checked some code in, and it got merged at 801, and the test broke. And my boss actually got really mad that I didn't fix the test, that I just wanted to wait another four hours. But that's a whole other story. Um, and the other testing example was I was working for a company that was based on the West Coast, and all their engineers and customers were on the West Coast, and I was here in Mountain Time. Well, some of the tests were failing, because once again, all their stuff was on Pacific Time, my code was running on Mountain Time, it was comparing hours, and things weren't right. Um, nothing wrong with the code, it was just the tests were poor. Um, and then I think my favorite example was when I was interfacing with a uh, third-party API. Um, we were discussing with them like how we were going to use their API, and they essentially had two APIs, a service one and a billing one. So you would purchase certain things through a specific API, and then the other one would send you back data. They told us that both these APIs were on UTC time. Uh, they weren't. 
Uh, one of them was on Pacific time, and the other one was on UTC. Uh, the only way we figured that out is we started looking at the data that was coming in from there, um, API, and realizing it wasn't matching the timestamps in the database. Um, so those are just a couple of good examples of, of why time can be so hard. Um, all right, so I guess the question is, you know, what do we do about it? Um, TLDR, just use UTC. Um, interestingly enough, my company, Spire, the majority of our products are internal, so we just use UTC, and actually most of the stuff doesn't bother us. Uh, but for people with customers out there, you probably, your customers probably don't want to see UTC times in their application. So that's not always the best solution. Um, so in that case, you usually want to do something where you store the data in UTC and then present it to them in a certain way. Um, a couple other solutions are in both your code and like in your database to use date times instead of dates. Um, to my knowledge, there aren't any date objects out there that are time aware, but date times are. So you can always just store the date at midnight with a time zone associated with it. Um, yeah. Um, so best practices when it comes to testing. You know, two or three of the war stories I told were around testing. Um, and really the simplest thing to do is to quote unquote freeze time. Um, there's a couple of Python libraries that let you do this that I can show you later. Um, this, I'm sure almost any language out there has libraries that do this, but they essentially let you lock down the time that's running on the system um, in Python by patching essentially datetime.now. Um, and those can be really useful for not only writing tests that are predictable, but also writing tests for edge cases that you can't necessarily test easily. Example being like a leap year, February 29th, you're probably gonna want a test involving time for that. Does that make a difference? All right. Um, yeah, so running tests that cover certain edge cases in your system is always intelligent. Um, I've definitely seen tests that have failed you know, on the first of the month or on the last of the month or what have you. Um, so that's really, I think, the most important thing when it comes to testing, freeze time. Um, if you're working with external services, that's not always the easiest thing to do. If you're doing integration tests and you're actually talking to other systems, you probably can't do that, but there's also nothing you can really do in that case. Um, yeah, so best practices in Python. Um, try to always use time zone aware objects. Don't use magic numbers as a good example as well. You know, don't say month plus one. Um, that's gonna get you into trouble when you hit December. Um, day plus one will also get you in trouble the last day of the month, um, things of that nature. And there's also a ton of good libraries out there for integrating with time zone objects. Uh, PYTZ is kind of the gold standard for time zones. Um, DateUtil has a lot of nice functions. I already mentioned FreezeGun for testing. And then DeLorean, which is one I actually haven't used, but I've read good things and has a really great name, so I just kind of had to put it up there. Um, yeah, so with that, I figured I would jump into a couple live examples to demonstrate some of these things. Hopefully. So the first example here, um, just converting a date time or date to a date time. Um, as you can see, you can you know create a date time with just year, month, day, and it gives you date time. Um, there's also a couple of nice helpers for date time objects, date and time, if you want to go the one way or the other. Um, and yeah, here's an interesting um, situation around getting the last day of the month. Um, I kind of talked about how using like a magic number in this case really isn't the best idea. And there's this great library out there called Calendar. And what it'll do is it'll, if you say month range and you give it a year and a month, it'll return you the number of days in the month. And then the first day of the week, zero index, I believe. Um, so in 2016, February, February started on a Monday and 
in 2019 in February it started on a Thursday, I think. Um, so yeah, then the example of getting the last day of the month, just do something similar we did above, uh, date time, today, year, today, month, and then I am getting that value out of the month range tuple to, uh, to give me the last day. Um, and here's also kind of an interesting problem um, around time resolution. So date times are accurate to the millisecond, I believe. Um, maybe it's, I think it's millisecond, sorry. It's, it's been a while since I worked with this. Um, but if you're looking to say get the quote unquote last moment of a, a given time period, you can use date time dot resolution to work with that. Um, the example I'm showing here is if I want to get the last moment in a given month, um, I mentioned the example of doing month plus one minus time resolution, and that's given me you know, 9, 30, 20, you know, 23rd hour, 59 minutes, 59 seconds, or 59 minutes, 59 seconds, 9.9999 uh, milliseconds. Um, and as I already talked about, things like that where you hard code a value to increment will fail at some point or another. Um, as this example shows, in December, that code would start to fail. So that would not be something you'd want to have running in production when all of a sudden midnight of December 1st rolls around and your code stops working. Um, so really, a, the best solution to something like this is, sorry, I just lost my place, um, is to once again use month range um, to get that value and subtract it out. Um, interestingly, you can also use max. So date times have a max and min value associated with them, where date time dot min is, I believe, epic time, and uh, date time dot max is some ridiculously large year that we're probably never going to hit. Um, and yeah, so there's just a couple more examples of that. Um, I mentioned the date util library. Uh, I'm using their relative delta. Um, Time deltas don't support incrementing by months. The main reason we've already kind of talked about where a month doesn't have a set number of days. Um, but they have a function relative delta, which does that for you. Um, and I'm guessing under the hood, it essentially does what I've showed you above, which is use like month range and then convert that. Um, but when you're looking for something like that where you have the last moment, um, what you're probably really concerned about is just comparing values. So you can always just use the less than comparison operator with date times, and it'll have a, a sem like a, a similar or exact same effect. If I say, you know, check the date before, you know, that specific time, it'll work for any, any time prior. Um, so yes. Um, oh yeah, then one little, one little gotcha there as well. Um, you can't actually compare dates and date times. They need to be the same type of object. You have to cast them into one or the other. So that's always a, a good thing to know and also probably a good reason to try to, to use just date times because it just makes, you're going to have to cast them anyway to do a comparison. So I feel like you might as well just use date time. Um, and then lastly, we've got uh, time zones. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of time zones available from PYTZ. Um, this is a database um, maintained, I'm actually not quite sure by who, but there's a database out there maintained that stores all the time zones in the world, their offsets, et cetera. Um, and that has some nice features where you can just say like, give me US Eastern and it'll give me that time zone. And here's an example of localizing a time zone. So time zone dot today does not give you a time zone aware object. Um, and in this case, I'm localizing it, so it doesn't have a time zone. So this attaches that value to it. Um, another example, uh, localizing with Pacific time. Um, oh, yes. Um, not another example. Um, because the object I had before had already been localized, it's no longer native, and when you try to localize it, it throws an error. And that's the case, if, if you're really interested in just replacing the time zone of a date time, you can simply do date time dot replace, 
and you can see the comparison here where I do dot replace on a date time and it just literally replaces the date time with the one I have or I do dot normalize and what it does is it's essentially the same data so it shifts the time and updates the time zone. Um, there's actually what I think is a bug here. Um, if you see the first statement, the time zone is minus seven hours and 53 minutes. I don't know why that is. Um, if anyone, last time I gave this talk, no one knew why. Um, if anyone in the room knows why, I would love to know because I still haven't figured it out. Um, I also don't use replace because it's not generally a good practice. Um, and then lastly, just a couple little oddities with uh, times and time zones. So in, this is also an interesting Python 2, Python 3 uh, issue. Um, Python 3, uh, time zones are always evaluate to true, um, but in Python 2, some of them will resolve to false. Um, time of zero, I believe, like date time dot min will also resolve to false in Python 2. Um, I don't know why you'd ever use that. Um, I'm sure someone at some time did and they made it a feature, but probably shouldn't do that. As I already mentioned, daytime min, daytime max, um, those are pretty useful um, because if you try to go below or above one of those, you'll get an exception. It basically says that's not a valid date. So that's basically all I've got. Um, I know I went pretty quickly, so I think I left plenty of time for questions. Yeah, cool.